Hi everybody. Uh, today I wanted to discuss a very common mistake that I oftentimes see in my practice. And this mistake is usually made uh, because the individual that has the trust in place um, either does it themselves or consults with an attorney that isn't experienced enough in estate planning to ask the right questions. So uh, it's a very common mistake and that is leaving an inheritance to an individual, a beneficiary in your life, somebody that is a loved one, uh, without taking into consideration government benefits that this person might be receiving. So essentially the problem arises when you leave an inheritance to a loved one and that person is receiving some sort of government benefit. So when they inherit their, uh, the asset, when they inherit the asset, what ends up happening is they get disqualified from this government benefit. They can no longer receive it. So I'll give you a very basic example. Let's say um, you create an estate plan, you create a trust, and you want to leave a $100,000 gift to your grandson. Uh, his name is Ben. However, Ben is receiving government benefits. So what ends up happening at your death is when Ben comes into his inheritance, he receives it, he has to report that to the government. And what ends up happening is he becomes disqualified from receiving that government benefit that he was taking advantage of. Um, so this is a very common problem. And with proper planning in place, this entire scenario can be avoided. Um, so for example, in that same scenario, rather than leaving a $100,000 inheritance to Ben, what grandma can do is set up what's called a special needs trust or supplemental needs trust. And rather than giving the money directly to Ben, we can put it into this special trust at her death. And what will end up happening is Ben will continue receiving the government benefits that he was already receiving. And at the same time, he can take advantage of the money that grandma left him in this trust. Um, now there's a few things that are different from a supplemental needs trust uh, versus a regular revocable family trust. The first being that Ben cannot control the money himself. So uh, although the money is there for his benefit, it is in addition to the government benefits that he's getting. So they have to supplement the government benefits. Um, in addition, the trustee has to be someone other than Ben. So grandma has to name you know, Ben's sister or Ben's parents to be in charge of the trust for him. So there's a lot of um, differences between the various types of trusts, but a supplemental needs trust or a special needs trust as it's called can very well uh, allow grandma to leave an inheritance to Ben without jeopardizing Ben's future government benefits or current government benefits, depending on when he receives this money. Um, now, this type of trust can be created for people that may receive money in the future uh, through government programs. So although they're not receiving any government benefits today, they might have a medical condition that can reoccur, uh, requiring them to go out and seek government uh, assistance. Uh, so it might be a uh, situation that could occur in the future. It might also be somebody who is currently uh, temporarily disabled, not necessarily permanently disabled. So there's uh, various uh, scenarios where this type of trust can come into play. And without the proper types of questions, um, that the attorney asks, uh, it could jeopardize this individual's uh, benefits from the government. So make sure that you're being asked the right questions because they do matter uh, in the long run. So if you would like to discuss this topic a little bit more, uh, feel free to give me a call. My information is uh, in below in the box below. So give us a call and we can schedule a consultation to uh, give you more information about this topic and discuss it further uh, with respect to your specific situation and your specific family needs. Thank you. Bye-bye.